All right, welcome back to the Real Guy Garage. Uh, so we're still working on the 78Z28 Camaro. Uh, at this point, transmission's painted, all the new seals and gaskets are in it. Engine's in the same boat, everything's ready to go in it. Uh, I'm actually gonna start probably mating up, putting the flywheel back on, getting the clutch ready to go, new motor mounts are in, everything under the hood is repainted, cleaned, etc., etc. Um, the first thing I noticed was the master cylinder was leaking, so that is also an issue that needs to be dealt with, obviously. Now is the time to do it. So, that's what we're working on today. So, I was able to order, um, well, a master cylinder rebuild kit, essentially. And we're going to go ahead and rebuild the master cylinder. So first things first, there's a snap ring that sits in the back of here. That has to come out. Once it's removed, you can take compressed air on your rear chamber of the master and you're gonna apply it gently and make sure you have something holding over the end of this. Uh, preferably not your hand because there's gonna be a lot of pressure when it pops out of there. And there's gonna be a lot of fluid, so don't do it near anything that's a painted surface. But with that removed, you can pull out everything here. As you can see, there's like a positive seal up at the front here, and then just a regular O ring seal at the back. That's basically all there really is to a master cylinder. So we can get that open here in a second. Okay. So with everything out of the kit here, we have their little diagram. So ours is more this style here. Um, so one thing, I don't know how easy it is to see inside here. But you'll see there's the other half, which is the secondary piston. So they give you a replacement primary piston. Well, what we have to do is try and get the secondary out of there is easier said than done in this particular case. So I'm going to use my long pliers here and I'll just go ahead and pop that piston out. So there we go. That's the secondary piston out. And you'll see why, <laughs> why we took that out. Because you'll see there's one, two, three more of the, uh, the O-rings, which you can see the kit includes here. Plus, at the same time, we also want to get all that garbage out of the master cylinder, too. All the old fluid. God only knows what else has been accumulated within it over the years. Uh, a can of brake cleaner that I just had. At the same time, when I do put this master cylinder back on, I'm going to flush the brake system quite a bit to try and get as much of the nastiness out of it as I can. Because really, frankly, this isn't really what you want inside of a master cylinder. And you don't really want dirt and other stuff inside your, inside your braking system. and let that sort of drain out a little bit here. I'm not really too worried about my workbench. That's why I put a chunk of old cardboard down here. Because <laughs> I knew there would be some nastiness. This invoice though. Alright. Give ourselves some space to work. Alrighty. You can see the stuff that came out of this master cylinder. This is the crap that gets trapped behind the pistons and everything else. This is why I'm not a big fan of brake fluid flushes 
on modern vehicles, but there is a time and place for them. I will agree that they are definitely something that serves a purpose, but you also have to be careful because you can definitely cause some problems by flushing a little bit too much, a little bit too fast, letting air get in it. Oof. Ooh, that's gross. That's full of crap. Alright, well I'm going to clean this up a little bit more, I think, inside, just because there's a lot of garbage in there that I don't want inside a Masters. What I quickly found was inside the bore after I cleaned all the dirt and slime out of it, the bore definitely had a little bit of corrosion and stuff in it. Just a little bit of pitting, but that's enough for it to catch the lip of the seal and potentially tear it. So what we're going to do is, I got a brake cylinder hone here, which is meant for doing, well, master cylinders and wheel cylinders. Uh, so I'll put a set of stones on it, and we'll go ahead and we'll give it just a little light hone inside just to clean up everything. And then we can clean up some of these other parts. It, that we're going to reuse and start reassembling the master cylinder. Okay, so I've got it on my cordless now. So the only thing I'm going to do is just gently insert these guys. Until it's as low down as I can get it. And that's all of our rust gone. So that now, when we put it together, we will have a nice smooth, but not too smooth, board for it to slide on. Okay, with everything cleaned up now, well, that we're going to reuse. This part here is disassembles like that. Again, this is your, your secondary piston. So we can take this seal off, and we're going to put it over here somewhere so we don't do anything stupid like put it back on, which would be my usual trick. I'm going to give that a wipe just to make sure it's clean. Now we can put this one back onto here, because this one's one of the new ones. And now these two here, you might want to pick, or something like that, which I'm going to grab. I'm also going to grab a bit of synthetic brake grease so that when we go to put everything back in the master cylinder we can make sure it's lubricated prior to installation. So there's one seal off and we'll get in here and we'll pull this other one off. We are probably going to want to pay attention to the orientation of how they came off so you can make sure that you put them on on in the correct direction. Seals are sometimes a little bit of a challenge to get back on just because you're trying to put something on that hasn't been on this 
particular component yet. So just remember to take your time because you're not in a hurry. And that way you're not going to have to worry about any damage to the seals. Okay, so with all the seals changed, we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of the brake lube and we're just going to lube up the seals. I use this stuff because it's synthetic, so it's not going to cause contamination by being a petroleum based product with the brake fluid. just in case it does come in contact with the brake fluid. Again, like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and flush everything on this thing anyway. So we're just gonna gently apply pressure so that the seal comes in here. Now when you get to this one, you either need a seal tool or if you're gentle, you can usually just kind of work your way around it and it'll go in. Get that shoved down in as far as you can get it. What I usually do is to make sure that everything's seated. I'll go ahead and give it a pull back and a push down in again just to make sure it's going to slide along that bore, which looks like we're nice and good there. All right. So, we're going to do the same thing with this one. You don't have to go crazy with the grease. You just want to put enough on there so that they're lubricated. Like that. There we go. Okay, I'm slide that down. Now what you might want to do, it's got a little washer on it there, is grab a bunch of some kind probably, <laughs> and uh, you want your snap ring on handy, because you're going to have to push and compress the springs so that you can go ahead and put your snap ring back on. Like that. That's all there is to do with the master cylinder. Now, I'm not going to touch the residual valve in this one. So you can put a new snap ring in there, but there was nothing wrong with the old one. I'm not going to touch the residual valve just because there was no actual hydraulic issues with this master cylinder. The only issue it had was with fluid leakage from the rear seal, which, as you can see, the seal's just flattened right out to the point where it's almost... I'll find something flat. To the point where it's, it's almost dead flat all the way across, so it's not sealing, and that's why we were getting fluid leakage because you'd have fluid sitting in here. Because that's essentially how how it moves the fluid, is the fluid sits in here. And then when it comes to where the openings are here, it builds pressure and pushes it out. So, that's all there is to this particular task. Uh, I am going to go ahead and I'll clean up this master cylinder. So I'll wire wheel it, take all the crap off the outside of it, I'll probably give it a coat of Salfetch primer and then I'll go ahead and splash a coat of uh, cast iron paint on it prior to putting it back on the car. But hopefully this will help somebody else out because a master cylinder rebuild kit is a lot cheaper than a new master cylinder and 9 out of 10 times Especially in this particular case with the Camaro, what I found was I bought two master cylinders for this car. One local, one online. 
and in both pictures they showed the correct master cylinder when I got the one in the mail I opened it it was not the correct master cylinder it didn't look anything like the picture so I thought okay I'll get one from the local parts place and it showed up and again it was not the correct master cylinder whereas obviously this is the original master cylinder for this car this is the correct master cylinder for this car.